What's up people? Well, I have been getting a lot of requests for this video over the past couple of months and now it is finally time to do it. We're going to talk about Brian Lomax's favorite slasher villain. Ranking the Leatherfaces, baby. So I've already ranked the Freddies, I've ranked the Jasons, I've ranked the Michaels, I've ranked the Chuckies. Now it's time for that chainsaw wielding bastard Leatherface. So we've got eight different films. So we're gonna have eight different leather faces, and I'm not necessarily ranking these based off of which films I like better, so it's not just gonna match my movie ranking in leather face form, although how much I like that movie is going to play a part in it. So I'm gonna be looking at a lot of different things. The design and the look of the character, the actor's portrayal of the character, how well the character is utilized in his individual movie, and of course, how much I like that movie and like that portrayal of leather face. So all of that mixed together, we're gonna have eight different placements and we're just gonna kick this bitch right off after you like and share this video, of course. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it, please. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video so much that you wanna check out all of my other content. I've ranked and reviewed every single movie in the Texas Chainsaw franchise, and I've got a ton of rankings of all the other famous slasher franchises, so if you like slasher shit, tons of stuff on this channel that you're gonna enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video so much that you wanna contribute and help this channel grow, please check down below for my Patreon link. That's the best way to help this channel out, best way to help it grow, and you get cool exclusive content for your eyes only. So thank you so much for considering that. And now let's get into ranking the leather faces. Starting off at number eight, the worst of the bunch, and this should surprise and be argument to absolutely nobody, that is the leather face from Texas Chainsaw, the next generation. What? the fuck is this? <laughs> Not just the movie, but the character too. Now, I mean, there's people out there that have the argument that pieces and elements of this character was in the original film, but I would argue that it's done to a disturbing level in the original film, where for here, it's so fucking ridiculous and weird and off kilter that it just has no impact whatsoever. So you got Leatherface in a movie that cannot be taken seriously, and a character that cannot be taken seriously, who is just whiny and screeching and yelping throughout the entire movie, it, eventually he's full on transvestite and running around in makeup and dresses and shit and do I even need to say anymore? This fucking version of Leatherface is terrible. If this was the version we got of Leatherface in the original film, that would have been one film and a done film. Moving on to number seven, I'm actually going to pick the Leatherface from the film Leatherface, the newest one, the most recent Texas Chainsaw film. Now, I actually like that movie pretty decent. If you've seen my review, if you've seen my ranking, I don't have too many problems with that movie like a lot of people do. I think that it's a pretty decent little road horror movie. It's kind of like a Devil's Reject style film. And I kind of liked the different twist of, you know, the mystery of who's gonna be Leatherface. Although who they chose to be Leatherface doesn't bother me so much in the grand scheme of the movie, it certainly is a weird pick that's strictly there just to make the obvious pick for Leatherface a red herring. And because of that, it's this low on this list because this guy just doesn't embody Leatherface at all throughout the entire film. Even when he goes full crazy in the climax of the film, yeah, it's disturbing-ish whenever he starts killing certain people in the movie that he was friends with. Um, it just doesn't land as well as it should. Like, you know, if you're gonna do a mystery thing with Leatherface, I understand you can't have the guy that looks identical to Leatherface be Leatherface, because then what the hell is the mystery? But I think maybe the mystery thing is just an off-kilter idea altogether, and it's just desperate for something new to do with this franchise that has been done to death. And with that being said, Leatherface, number seven. Number six for me is gonna be the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw 3D. Now, I will say, I don't think that the design or the performance of this character in this film is that bad at all. It actually works pretty well as a direct sequel to the original movie, so I get all of that. Where a lot of my issue comes from is the utilization of that character in this film. Not only is the movie very generic, but when they try to make Leatherface an anti-hero and try to make you sympathize with him and suddenly he becomes like the protagonist by the end of the movie, yeah, don't do that shit, okay? No, 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 we don't, we don't do that in our slasher franchises. So that takes a gigantic chunk away from what could have been great about this performance in this version of Leatherface 
and drops it all the way back down here to number six. Number five is going to be the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Part Two. Now, though I like this movie quite a bit, it's actually really high on my ranking. I actually have fun with the goofy tone of it. It's a very much love or hate it film, so I understand both sides of that coin. This Leatherface is straight up played for laughs. He's not played for scares. He's not played to be intimidating or disturbing or off kilter or weird to look at or just to get under your skin like he was in the original. This is a clown with a leather, uh, a chainsaw. <laughs> I couldn't get that word out. And because of that, it drops it quite a bit down because I prefer Leatherface being a scary character, being one that disturbs you. Now he's utilized well for the film that he's in. That's the reason why he's not towards the very bottom of this list because this movie is very much going for that. It's going for the goofy tone, it's going for the laughs, it's going for the off-kilter humor. So their version of Leatherface makes sense in this film, but this Leatherface is here just because he's one of the iconic characters of the franchise. I don't think that he really, there's no points added to how iconic he is because of the performance in part two. Number four for me is actually going to be Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw 3, which is also kind of named Leatherface. You hear that name a lot, just re recycled titles and all kinds of shit in this franchise. But this Leatherface is straight up in the middle for me because I don't think that the movie is memorable at all. It's one of the most forgettable Texas Chainsaw movies. And this is a very forgettable Leatherface, but he's played serious. He's played as the villain. He's played to be disturbing. I actually kind of like the look a little bit. I definitely like the chainsaw that he has. And he's made to be intimidating. So just that little bit of edge to give it over part two. Like part two and part three are definitely in the middle of this list for me to where I'm like, eh, I, don't give, I don't really give a fuck. They're somewhere in there. But part three, I'm just gonna give the slight edge because he's made to be a horror villain, not to be a clown with a chainsaw. Now we're at the top three, and these are the top three that I think most people would pick for their top three, so you're gonna get a lot of different opinions on what is left in this list, but for number three for me is going to be the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Now, there are some huge fans of this movie that think this is the best in the franchise, the best version of Leatherface. I will say that this is the best look of Leatherface by far because I love the actor who plays Leatherface in those two remake films. I think that his size and his intimidation factor and just what he brings to the role is what I think of when I think of Leatherface. <laughs> But the look in the beginning is much more traditional. You know, he gets the face cut off of one of the main characters and he starts wearing it and it just looks like a leather face. You know, it looks like what you would want Leatherface to look like. There's a lot of complaints about the remake where the look of his, you know, leather face is a little bit fake and I'll get into that. But the intimidation factor is there, the performance is there, it's more so how much I like the movies now for where these rankings are going to be at because they're pretty damn close as far as the performance and the iconic sense of this character goes from here on out. The beginning, I like aspects of it. I've never thought it was anywhere near as good as the remake or as the original just because it seems to go full gore with not as much not as much tone, not as much creativity in the direction and the cinematography and you know, things to get under your skin without just showing people being sawed in half. So the beginning, I understand why gore hounds like it, but for me, though I enjoy the film, it's never been as good as the other two films that are above it. And now we get down to brass tacks and we get down to where we separate the men from the boys. Just kidding, this is where we separate the people who get really pissed off about you not liking this movie the best and the people that get really pissed off that you don't like this movie the best. Number two for me is going to be the original, the Gunner Hansen Leatherface. Now, if you go back and you watch my reviews, if you go back and watch my rankings, there's gonna be a lot of context for why I like certain characters in certain movies as far as the remake and the original better in the remake. Uh, I'm not gonna get into all of that because I've said it ad nauseum, but I did not grow up with the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
I saw the remake first. So that was my introduction to this franchise. That was my introduction to this character. And when I went back to revisit the original, while it is disturbing for the time, it's always felt a little bit dated for me and I've never been able to get into it and have the impact that a lot of people have from it. But you can't take away from the fact that that character and that performance in that original film is iconic. It was disturbing as hell for the time. It was unlike anything that had ever come out before. And it's certainly unique in the sense that, you know, it's, he's a slasher villain, but he's also just feels like he's the one who's kind of being, you know, the puppet on the strings and never quite get an idea of where this character is coming from in that original film. He's scary because of his intimidation factor and his size and the look of him, obviously. But, you know, scenes where you have him sitting down and he's kind of, licking himself and he's got like the weird teeth and then you get to the dinner scene where he swaps over to the lipstick mask and there's a lot of very unnerving things about this original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and about this original performance as Leatherface that it's got to go up here at number two. But for me, the Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake is the best. That is the one that I think about. That is the one that I run from in my dreams. That is the one that I hold true and have a nice little blood-soaked place in my heart for because like I said this was my introduction to this franchise and before I saw this film I had not seen too many movies that are kind of like this going for that disturbing icky you know morbid sense of horror so when I first saw this remake in a dark theater with maybe five people in the theater to this date it's still the scariest theater movie experience that I've ever had and it stuck with me that way and when I rewatched this film I revisit some of that and I just think that the performance and the size and just the update of the character is much more intimidating for me personally. I get the gripes with the mask. You know, I actually like whenever he wears Kemper's face. Some people laugh at that scene. I think that scene is actually pretty effective, but I understand the, the mask that he wears for most of the film looks like it's really really dead aged skin so I get that complaint it's never really bothered me too much that's why I prefer the look in the beginning I'm with you but everything else the movie the performance the tone the size of the character the utilization of the character in the movie I just think it's spot on in that remake and that is my favorite Leatherface so what do you guys think? How do you rank the leather faces? Let me know down below in the comment section, please, and we will talk about that. Please like and share this video. Also, let me know down in the comment section, what is the next character ranking that you want me to do? That might be an interesting topic. Don't say saw, because there's only one jigsaw, and I do not want to rank the bitch-ass apprentices of that franchise. Nonetheless, like and share this video, please hit that subscribe button, and remember, as always, that opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.